Welcome to another session for uh, computer softwares and understanding uh, details about computer softwares. Uh, my name is uh, Moshiri Nyaga and uh, we want to understand more about computer software. So uh, previously we had discussed uh, about hardware and you are aware that uh, computer hardware is useless without uh, a software. So how can we define a software? A software is a set of is a set of programs that instructs the computer about the task uh, to be performed. Software tells the computer how the task are to be performed or how the hardware carries out this task. Uh, different sets of softwares can be loaded on the same hardware to perform different kind of tasks. For example, a user can use a computer or the same computer hardware for writing a report or for running a payroll program. Softwares can be broadly classified into two categories. We have the first one, which is uh, the system software, and the second one, the application softwares. Uh, we can start discussing the first one. Um, the system software provides um, the basic functions that are performed by the computer, and the application software is used by users to perform specific uh, tasks. And this is the um, the image or how we can uh, understand more about software. You can see on the inner on the inner side we have the hardware and then on the outer circle uh, or triangle we have the system software application software and now the users who are commonly referred to as uh, the software take note of the source of the image so this is um, at, at the center of the components we have the hardware and then the second software that takes over after the hardware is the system and then we have the application software and then on the outer uh, uh, square we have the users who are commonly referred to as um, the users of the libraries. So let's start this, uh, understanding more about the system softwares. Um, the system softwares provide the basic functionalities to the computer. System software is required for the for the working of the computer itself. So without the working of the computer, uh, without the system software, the computer cannot work. The user of the computer does not need to be aware about the functioning of the system software while using the computer. For example, or this is a very good example, when you buy a computer, the system software would also include different device drivers when you request for using any of these devices, the corresponding device driver software interacts with the hardware device to perform the specific request. If the appropriate device driver for any device says a particular model of a printer is installed on the computer, while printing on this printer, it means the computer um, can, can work. The purpose of the system software are to provide uh, the basic uh, functionality to the computer, control the computer hardware, and uh, act as the interface between the user, um, the user who we have referred to as the application, uh, who we have referred to as the live words, right? So, and also the application software and the computer hardware, right? On the basis of their functionality, system software may be divided into two main categories, right? So we have the system software for management and the functionalities of the computer. 
and secondly we have the system software for the development of the application of the application and other softwares so we can start discussing um, about um, the system software for the management and functionalities of the computer um, it relates to um, to the functioning of different components of the computer like the processor input devices uh, output devices etc the system software is required for managing the operations performed by the components of the computer and the devices attached to the computer it provides support for various um, services as requested by the computer software an example we have the operating system which automatically uh, is an example of a system software uh, we have the device the drivers we mentioned it earlier and we have the system utilities software that constitutes the system software for management of the computer um, for the computer and its resources remember uh, resources management is very very important factor in uh, the operations of a computer let's discuss uh, discuss about uh, the system software for the development of the application and other software we have uh, it provides uh, services required for the development and the execution of the application and other softwares um, we have uh, the programming languages softwares example java uh, we have the cc plus we have translator software we have a loader and we have the linker are also categorized as the system software and are required for the application software development right take note we have the element of uh, of the software the application software development using this type of the system softwares right um, so the system software for management and functionalities um, of the computer we can start discussing about the operate the operating system uh, abbreviated as an OS um, it is an important part of a computer and OS uh, creates an intermediary between or sits uh, intermediary between the user of a computer and the computer hardware so um, it's more like the link between the liveware and the hardware right different um, different kinds of application so software use specific hardware um, resources of a computer like the CPU the input output devices and the memory as needed by the application software the OS or the operating system controls and align the word controls and coordinates uh, the use of hardware among different application software and the users it provides an interface that is convenient for the users to use and facilitate efficient operations of the computer resources So sometimes uh, somebody might ask you what is an operating system so um, an operating system can be defined as a program that controls the execution of application programs and act as the interface between the user of the computer and the computer hardware take note that the operation the operation the operating system runs all the time why the computer is in use right why below are the some of the goals um, um some of the goals um oh um, sorry uh, these are some of the goals of 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 an operating system first is to control uh, execute the user and the application programs 
and to make sure that the computer system is convenient to use, uh, easily to solve the user problems and use the computer hardware in an efficient manner, right? So these are some of the key, uh, these are some of the key functions of a, an operating system, right? But before we start, uh, we, can just, we can just have a highlight of a statement where we can say an operating system is large and complex software consisting of several components. Each component of an operating system has its own set of defined inputs and outputs, right? Different components of an uh, operating system perform specific tasks to provide the overall functionality of an operating system. The key function of an OS are, right, to provide an environment which users and application software can do work. It manages uh, different resources of the computer like the CPU, time, memory space, uh, file storage, input devices, and others. During the use of computer by other programs or users, operating system manages various resources and allocates them when it's required efficiently. Right? Uh, that identity controls the execution of different programs, different programs uh, to prevent um, occurrence of errors or maybe the most common way um, the hanging of the computer or when uh, maybe the memory it might be overused and others, right? It also provides uh, a convenient interface to the users in the form of commands and graphical interface which facilitates the use of the computer. So uh, in a nutshell, um, um, we can uh, just uh, divide uh, the use of computer in different formats. Like we can say the first work of, uh, of the operating system is process management, um, which involves the control access to shared resources like the memory. We have the control execution of application. We have um, how to create, execute, and delete a process, cancel or resume a process, schedule a process, synchronize communication, and deadlock handling for processes. All right? That, uh, that's what we mean by the process management. On the other side, we've mentioned about memory management, uh, memory ma management, the activities of the memory management are exclusively handled by the operating system, which is to allocate the memory, free the memory, uh, the allocate memory to a program when a, when, when a used block is, is uh, done with the using and keep track of the memory usage. Right, that's on the memory management. On the third one, we have the file management. Uh, which involves the creation and deletion of files, directories, provide the access to files, allocate space for files, keep a backup for the files, and secure files. That's all about the file management. On the other side, we have the device management. The device management um, uh, handles the task which is open, close, write, device drivers, communicate and control and monitor each device mo device driver that is there, right? Those are the four major uses of an operating system, but we have others like protection and security, right? How can I explain further about that? The OS or the operating system protects the resources of the system the user's um, authentication, like you have to input the password, file attributes like read, write, encryption, 
backup for data used by the operating system to provide basic operation. Uh, and that will bring a, a, choice, a question about um, about the open source, the open source software and the commercial software, which is safe. You can do that as an assignment, right? So the last use of um, the operating system might, we can talk about the user interface or the command prompt. In most uh, books, they talk about the graphical user interface, but um, the work of the operating uh, system provides an interface between the computer user and the computer hardware. The user interface is a set of commands or a graphical user interface via which the user interacts with the application and the hardware, right? So those are the six major functions of an operating system, which is the process management, memory management, file management, device management, um, protection and security of the computer, the user interface or command interpreter of the computer. So uh, we can move on and just try understanding about types of operating system. So operating systems are classified in different types depending on their capability of processing. We have the first one which is a single user and single tasking. Uh, we have the second one which is the single user and multitasking. We have uh, uh, the multi-user which is the third one, the fourth one multi-processing, real-time and embedded. So we can start discussing the first one which is uh, the single user and the single task operating system it is used by a single user for a standalone single computer for performing a single task an example can be operating system for a personal computer commonly referred to as the pc a single user os for a, for a good example, if, if the user is editing a document, then a document cannot be printed on the printer simultaneously. Single use, user operating system, a very simple operating system designed to manage one task at a time, right? A good example of a single user operating system can be Microsoft DOS or MS. DOS. We can move to the next one, which is the single user and multitasking uh, or, or OS. Um, it allows execution of more than one task or process concurrently, underlying concurrently happening at the same time. Uh, the processor time is divided among different tasks. The operating system types are also called time sharing. Uh, the operating uh, system types are also called the time sharing OS. The processor switches rapidly between uh, processes. For exa a good example would be the user can listen to music on the computer while writing an article using the word processor software. The user can switch between application and also transfer data between them. All right. A good example would be uh, Windows, uh, the Windows 7, Windows 10 operating system. I'm not biased uh, based uh, on my examples, but those are most common, uh, which help um, uh, with these processes. Right. Uh, we can move on to the next one, which is called the multi-user operating system. Um, it is used in computer networks that allow same data and application to be accessed by the multiple users at the same time. The users can also communicate with each other. A good example is Linux, which is an open source um, Unix Windows Server. By Microsoft, we have Windows 7, 
and most of the Windows uh, family operating system are example of multi-user operating system. Um, we can move on. We have the real-time operating system. Uh, they are designed um, they are designed to respond to an event within a predetermined uh, time. These operating systems are used to control processes. Processes is done within a time constraint. The operating system monitors the event that affect the execution of the process and respond accordingly. They are used to respond to queries in areas like the medical imaging system, industrial control systems. Um, uh, a very good example would be Lynx operating system. That is uh, an example of a real-time operating system. The spelling of the Lynx is L Y N X. If you read more about the uh, Lynx, you will understand why we have. That we move to the next one, which is the embedded operating system. Uh, the embedded uh, it's um, embedded in a device in the ROM. The the ROM they are specific to the device and are less resource intensive. They are used in appliances like uh, microwave, washing machine, traffic control system. Uh, understand the old traffic control systems because these days we have the intelligent uh, uh, traffic control system which are more interactive and resource intensive. Let's move on with this something uh, we've been mentioning about the device drivers. Anytime you think about uh, a driver in uh, the real world, you know, an example, a car can never move from one point uh, without a driver, right? Uh, sometimes even the uh, the automatic cars that have been developed, they have to have an element that has something or a computer that try to mimic um, what a driver does. So a computer has a, some uh, software referred to um, referred to as the device drivers. So a device uh, driver act as the translator between the hardware and the software that uses the devices. In other words, it is, it is, um, it is the, it, it is uh, the intermediary between the device and the software in order to use the device. Um, Some, device, some devices that are commonly connected to the computers are keyboard, we have the mouse, we have the hard disk, we have the printer, we have the speakers, uh, we have the joystick, webcam, scanners, digital cameras, and monitor. For proper working of a device, it's corresponding, um, it's corresponding device must be installed on the computer. For example, when you give a command to read uh, data from a hard disk, the command is sent to the hard disk drive, disk drive driver, and is translated to a form that the hard disk can understand. The device driver software is typically supplied by respective device drivers. Right? Uh, just to for you to understand, we have. Uh, maybe a joystick, which is uh, a gaming pad, where you, if you connect it on your computer and it's not really working or it's not responding, or the pads are not really working, the first thing that you need to do is check about the device drivers, right? Download it specific for that pad. Another common one is good, and uh, these sometimes come with the with the with the hardware, right? Printers the same. When you connect a printer and um, you try printing and you you cannot find the printer active, and you've done all the physical connection, 
the first thing you do or how do you troubleshoot you just check whether the device drivers are available and you can plug and play um, them some operating system are mostly the commercial one are improving day by day day by day they are making sure that most uh, most hardwares like uh, the keyboards monitors printers are compatible with their system so they're working closely with the manufacturers so that um, the operating system try to make sure that the device drivers all they can host other devices let's move on we have the system utilities um, the system utilities is required for maintenance of computer system utilities are used for supporting and enhancing the programs and the data in a computer some utilities may come embedded with the operating system other may be added later and whenever you hear about utilities um, in human just think about uh, something like internet is an example of uh, is a utilities these days in our home but in some in some houses it's not a utility but water electricity um, communication uh, roads infrastructure all those are uh, are utilities that you have uh, to put them maybe in your computer to enhance right so anytime you think about uh, utilities or system software these are things that a computer can be added some are included on the operating system but examples include antiviruses we have data compression um, softwares we have uh, disk compression software disk partitioners we have disk cleaners we have system uh, profiling we have backup programs we have network managers all these um, examples of uh, system utilities remember we are still discussing about system softwares which is a very very wide uh, topic so we can move on we have um, we still on that the other part is system software for development of application and other programs All right remember uh, that uh, we have programming languages that develop the application uh, software these can be grouped under system software uh, under system softwares so uh, what is a programming language a programming language consists of a set of vocabulary of vocabulary and grammatic rules to express some computations in tasks that, that a computer can can and has to perform uh, programming languages are used to write a program or a software which controls the behavior of a computer codify their algorithm precisely or enable the human computer interface each language has a unique or keywords and a special syntax for organizing um, organizing program instructions the programming language should be understood both by the programmer the programmer is somebody who is writing the program and the computer a computer understands the language of zeros and one remember that's the basic of a computer while the programmer is more often more comfortable with english like language so Programming language usually perform, uh, usually refers to the high level languages. That's an example, like COBOL, BASIC, uh, C, C, Java, C, uh, VB, which is the Visual Basic, JavaScript. Uh, um, programming languages fall uh, in three categories, or programming languages fall in three categories we have we have the first one which is referred to as the machine language the machine language so um, machine language 
is what the computer can understand, but it is difficult for the programmer to understand. A program written in a machine language is a collection of binary digits or bits that the computer reads and interprets. It is a system of instruction in, and data. It is a system of instruction and data executed directly by the computer CPU. It is also referred to as the machine code or the object code. It is written as it is written using the zeros and ones. The other one is the assembly language. Um, the assembly language. The assembly language falls between the machine language and the high level language. They allow the programmer to substitute the names of numbers. A program written in assembly language uses the symbolic representation of a machine code needed to program a particular processor or the processor family. This representation is defined by the CPU manufacturer or the family or the processor family. The representation is defined by the CPU manufacturer and is based on the abbreviation. On the abbreviation that help the programmer remember individual instruction um, registers ETC. Uh, the high level language is easy is easier to understand and the user for the programmer um, so sorry uh, so for me for the high level is is easier to understand and the user of the programmer but difficulty for the computer a program in a high level language is written in english like language such as um, such languages hide the details of the CPU operation and are easily portable across the computer. A high level language makes the processor, uh, the process of developing programs simpler and more understandable with respect to assembly um, machine level language. Uh, so we just discussed uh, in detail more about all the system software, how we have group different um, um, different types of system software in different lang uh, different uh, different categories so we move to the next type of uh, software which is uh, the application software so the application software um, the software that a user use, uses for accomplishing a specific task Application software may be a single program or set of programs. A set of programs that are written for specific purpose and provide uh, the required functionality uh, functionality of a specific uh, task or for a specific software package. Um, application software um, are written for different kind of applications such as graphics, word processors, media players, database application, telecommunication, accounting purposes. We have like uh, uh, Facebook, uh, social media, all those are examples. So we have different uh, types uh, of uh, softwares that we have displayed, which are word processor, uh, image processing software. We have the accounting softwares, we have the spreadsheet softwares, and we have the presentation softwares. With that, I think uh, we have concluded uh, the lesson for uh, softwares, and I really appreciate. Keep on uh, uh, giving us comments, and all the best in whatever you do. Thank you.